Hey, what's up, happy people? I'm Robert Arrington. This is my beautiful wife, Sarah. This is a very special guy right here. This is Captain Rusty Nixdorf. He is the very first captain that I ever worked for as a mate 20 years ago. 20 years. Wow. How, did, how did it go by that fast? And lots of you have seen the Rambo, my boat. That boat was our dinghy on the Speed Merchant. Yes, it was. 20 years ago, yeah. and and uh, whenever that boat sold, now the bubbles. I know. See that Gator just it. went down right there. He's it. laying on the bottom right there. See those bubbles right there? See, see him? See how he's going to the right? He's yeah. walking along there. He's Boy. walking right through there right now. Sure. You can tell when you're looking at a Gator if he's got a real wide bubble trail. That means right. his body's real wide right. down there. But um, the Rambo came from working with Captain Rusty, yeah. and to hear about a month ago he said he's got a good friend named Floyd that would really want to go on an alligator hunt well Sarah and I we supported our family for a few years on alligator hunting if it were not for alligator hunting we there's no we would not have been able to survive financially I would have had to find out something else and it would have altered our course so gator hunting is something very special to us and so we just wanted to bring them out of course no charge this is me to captain because the first thing the hardest thing you'll ever get in life is your first mating job you know what i mean but uh thanks to captain first rusty first time hired first time fired <laughs> hey, i'm sure there's a lot of mates out there looking going oh i work for captain rusty and you know exactly where you were when he fired you i was just thankful he didn't gaff me with the gal so <laughs> anyway we're up here on one of my favorite spots we're gonna run out trying to find a big old alligator. It is currently, what time is it? 4.29. We've got 31 minutes till legal hunting hours. So we're gonna run out, start spotting and stalking, see if we can't find a big one. We're looking for one over 11. That's the benchmark. As you can see back there, we've got storms all around us, north, east, south, and west. We're just in this one little pocket. Uh, we tried to get over here on the far north side, so we're in the lee, which means we're out of the wind. I put a bait out way back there, just hoping that a gator pops up. I mean, you really don't know anything until you see one. Right now, we're looking. When you come out here and do this, it's important to have a good pair of binoculars. These are Burris Optics from Greeley, Colorado. They have a lot of contrast and they're super clear. When you're looking here, you're trying to pick out something very specific. So when you're baiting gators, you wait till you see the gator you're after and then put the bait out for him. Talk about the luckiest thing in the world. I put the bait out, I'm just looking. There's a big gator going to it right now. All right, so we got a pretty good gator here. We saw him eat it, and uh, we're gonna power pull up. Here we go, just let him keep, let him keep tape, take and drag until I get turned around. Okay, now what we're gonna do is Gently just get a little drag and you're gonna just reel. There you go. Make sure you're level winding. I'm I'm going right over his head right here. Look at the garfish. And he let the chicken go. Now we've got him on just the hook. Easy, and then just try to get a crank. Perfect. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back, 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 back up. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Back up, keep it going, honey. Right there, now reel, 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 reel. Just hold him there for a second. 
No, he's got him right here. Just. Back up, back up. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Flip your bail, flip your bail. Back up, honey. Back up. Oh, neutral, neutral. Good. We got him where we want now. Hey. Good. <laughs> hey, we got us a nice one here, boys. Right there, right there. Now you hit him. Grab that, grab that, grab that tape. Yeah, we're, we, we need to stop like fiddle farting around with this one. Hold on, get off my line here. One, two, two three, now start rolling him. That's what I was avoiding. I didn't want that tail to hit you in the knee. You're very welcome, bro. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Pretty work, buddy. You're awesome. So if y'all wonder why I was so ultimately intense on everything being perfect, I knew that gator hadn't eaten the bait. And I knew whenever I set the hook on him, literally the second I caught him with the hook, boom, we let go of it in Gabe, Blue Gabe, those hooks. No one goes and catches that gator like that. Right there. All right, you guys, we just got here. This is the processor. It's Florida Trophy Gators, Okeechobee, Florida. This is Mario. Mario skins alligators every single day for a living. He is a master at it. And instead of me skinning another gator for a video, I want to show you how good this guy is. If you're hunting anywhere in this area, you kill a gator, you can bring it here. They do taxidermy work, they skin them, they process them, they do all that. But more importantly, they're just really good people that are honest. And uh, Mario's gonna rock it. See, he's having this alligator, he's having a, a head mount with a cape. So he's just uh, getting it set up right now. If you get an alligator and you bring it here to be processed, you can come here 24 hours a day, use this crane system. It's on this arm, pick your gator up, fill out all your paperwork and throw them in a cooler. Big old animal right there, y'all. There we go. Into the processing room, ladies and gentlemen. Having a sharp knife is a must. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna come down the center of the alligator right here. Floyd wants to have this hide tanned with the horn backs. So he's gonna trophy skin it, which means he's gonna come down the center. You're gonna have all the scoots and he's also gonna have a cape, which means this is gonna sit on the table and you're gonna see some of his neck. You may not think so, but right down here, this is the hardest part of the whole alligator to skin. So now he's got this entire gator marked out. He's got all the legs, the center, the jib. Now he's gonna start skinning. So if you kill your gator and leave the dart in, you just come in here, there'll be a bucket full of darts and typically they'll have your tag number on the dart so you can come back and get it. 
for him to be this good, the knife has to be a specific sharpness. It can't be too dull, it can't be too sharp. And he knows exactly how much pressure to put in exactly what places. You know, with a deer, hog, elk, anything like that. You, you can get away with a lot. With an alligator, you've gotta be very precise and nothing will peel. You can hang this alligator and the hide is not gonna peel away. You have to cut every square inch. Where this alligator rolls across, it looks round, but there's actually a crease right there. In that crease, the hide folds in and then comes back out. And so a lot of people, when they're skinning right here, they cut a hole right there. Very popular place to cut a hole. Now that they've got the gator all the way skinned out, he's got two crates here. Your tag will be in each crate will be labeled with your tag number so you know you're always getting your alligator. Every piece of meat on this alligator is edible. Every single piece of meat. Instead of boning this out, we left the legs whole. He can put them on his smoker and make a nice slow cooked meal with that. It's amazing. That is the entire wrap of the alligator. That's half the tail, just like that. Now you can take this, come over here. This right here will pull right out. That's your, that's the tenderloin. That's the tenderloin. That's the premier piece of meat on any alligator. A lot of people call it the jelly roll. Now, with that, that's that meat on the tail. See all this fat? All that fat? That fat has got to be trimmed. If you try eating the fat, you're gonna hate yourself. Now that the whole gator is skinned out, She's gonna take this meat and start trimming it. Once she trims it out, she'll cut it into like normal sized portions and run it through this Hobart Cuber. So she's cutting it into like steak sized portions and then she'll just trim that fat right out. All that silver skin, sinew, connective tissue, all of that gets cut out. And you're left with perfect steaks just like that. I mean, gorgeous. Now, turn that on. You're gonna have these steaks and they will let it run right through there. And you run it through two times. And you're left with a perfectly cubed out piece of alligator steak. When they're doing this, they completely clean this area in between every alligator. So they do an alligator, process the, package it, clean it, and then they do another alligator. It's a really unique process. Now you can have your meat packaged in one pound, two and a half pound, or five pound packets. Gets weighed. Perfect. And then they set it over here in this, just like that. And I'm not gonna jump ahead, but they just, There you go. Perfectly processed, vacuum sealed alligator meat. Come to me. That's all she wrote right there. Now we're gonna take that back to the house. We're gonna be making something good. See you in the kitchen, y'all. I told you it'd be an adventure. <laughs> wow. That's really good. That's a hug. Hey, we are in the kitchen. I got the team, Rusty and Floyd. Obviously, Rusty brought his better half, Miss Renee. And back by popular demand, <laughs> I got the man. I got Chef Chris Taylor from Taylor Farmhouse Cafe. It's a long story. You're gonna hear the story, but the whole reason we became friends was over alligator hunting and how to clean a gator. But he told me about two weeks ago, he goes, look, if you ever get gator meat, I wanna do a cool recipe. So, without further ado, 
That's the meat that we just cleaned about three hours ago. And uh, go ahead, tell us what you're gonna do. I, I have no idea, so what you got? Well, this recipe that I'm gonna do tonight is my favorite recipe for conch, believe it or not. For conch? For conch. I know a lot of you and a lot of your fans have been to the islands and get fresh conch, so you can use this recipe for that as well. But getting very tenderized conch or gator in this instance is critical. You have done a great job tenderizing this, but at home, a way to do it is to get yourself a nice mallet, protect it with some plastic, a Ziploc works great, and just gently tap it out. Breaks it up, makes it tender. That's beautiful. Conch and gator are similar in one sense, that they're very high in protein and they're also very lean. So they can tend to be very tough unless you tenderize them. And when you cook it, it will come back together even more. So wow. it's okay to tenderize it. Super plenty. nice. This is actually a blend of olive oil. I love olive oil for the flavor, but it's blended with canola oil, which actually fries a lot better. Okay. So while we're getting the pan nice and hot, this particular recipe likes a lot of cracked pepper. And of course, some fresh ground salt. Is that the Himalayan pink sea salt? It is. Good deal. Pan is nice and hot. I'm just gonna lightly flour it. Just lightly floured. That's it. I'm the pepper grinder here, y'all. This recipe is very similar to an extremely popular thing in the islands, especially Bahamas, called cracked conch. But we do a little twist on it where you add garlic and a balsamic glaze. Beautiful over a salad. So I gotta say hello to a lot of you guys that actually, a lot of people came to your cafe last week just after watching that video, huh? They did. I had one fella and his lovely fiance, they were in Orlando, they drove down. I just so happened to be there, got to hang out with them for a while. And uh, it's just cool whenever I watch, when people watch our videos and then go hang out at the places we hang out and do the things that we do. I think that's awesome. Well, I'm excited about this recipe because it's something that anybody can do at home. It's really not complicated, the ingredients are simple. If you get gator. You gotta get good gator. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have gator at home. Exactly. <laughs> now that the gator is done cooking, we've seared both sides. We're gonna pull it out and we're gonna make our sauce. So precise. It's so precise, I love this. And so what I've noticed with him, you just add a little bit of oil as you need it. Right. Is that by design? Yeah, you want to keep the oil hot. So if you take a hot pan with hot oil and add a little bit of oil, thermodynamic says it's going to stay hot. If you add a lot at the same time, it can cool your pan down and it won't do the searing properly. It'll just absorb into the meat. Now you know. All right. Now I'm going to turn my pan down just a little bit. Add a little bit more oil. This is the critical part of the cooking. The only part that's even remotely difficult. And that is the garlic. I know Robert's a big garlic fan. I'm a big garlic fan. That's just a garlic paste? This is just minced garlic with olive oil. Okay. But the key is the smell. You can smell when it releases before it burns. So you want to release that wonderful garlic without burning it. And then we deglaze with the balsamic. 
It's perfect. Can you smell it? Yeah. Isn't that amazing. Man. Can you smell how it released? Wow. Now, once we put the balsamic in, it cools it down enough that it won't burn, which is critical. You don't want burned garlic. So we're gonna put a little, little sugar. A little brown sugar in there for the balance. So we have that acidic sweetness balance. Doesn't really take much. So this isn't like just your this isn't just like your fried gator tail. This here is like what? It's a little stepped up, but it's actually something you can do at home. It's not hard at all. It's not complicated. Now you see how that sauce is reducing a little bit? We're gonna put it on super low. We're gonna go ahead and chop our gator down. If you just take a piece of it, it's it just comes right apart. Yes, yeah, delicious. Oh man, that black pepper is bomb. It needs it, doesn't it? It's so nice. Man, what a wonderful day. Thank you so much for everyone being here. Let's just say a quick lesson. Yes. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Thank you for a wonderful day out on the water with our friends. Thank you for keep bring, you know, bringing us home safely with a great gator. And please nourish this food to our body. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Awesome stuff. Now, I've literally been fending off this food so they didn't <laughs> eat it. Because I wanted everyone to taste it at the same time. All right. I would have never got. thought of this ever, ever, ever. I tasted the corn first. Awesome. Oh, mm. that's amazing. That is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's alligator. Yeah. Do you oh like it? Oh my goodness, it's, mm. it's amazing. It is so good. I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us all day, and uh, take care. God bless. You guys say we gone. <laughs> you guys say we gone. Say we gone. Gone. Gone.